faith is taking the first step, even when you don't see the whole staircase. So again, I encourage you to take that step, keep on moving upward and beyond what you even can imagine and dream. And I just want to say thank you for being here with us today and good day. Thank you, Dr. Hill. Thank you for sharing those warm, warm words of inspiration with us. I have the privilege to and honor to introduce three phenomenal women that will uh, that are well versed in their expertise in the area of human resource, as well as hiring and people retention. We thank them for participating and allow me a few moments to just give you a brief, uh, just a brief um, information about them. However, we know that their whole full resume is just full of just experience and a wealth of knowledge. First, we have our moderator, Lisa Harrell. She is the Chief Human Resource Officer. She currently works for Cleveland Avenue LLC. Her job is to, fund, is to identify and develop talent in creating a unique company culture. Her role, she is accountable for overseeing the life cycle of all the CA team members, including succession planning, as well as total rewards development. Also, she is accountable for building and executing the phenomenal programs up under the foundation for education and internship experience. She has 25 years of combined experience in business consulting, human capital management, leadership development, organizational communication, and change management. She is also a part, the chairperson of the Board of Governors State University, and where she is also members of Top Ladies of Distinction and a board member of the OASIS Foundation for Education and a member of Alpha, Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. We also have Latrice Ose Acevedo. Latrice has over 15 years of HR experience and she is currently employed at FedEx as a senior HR business professional. She is a seasoned HR leader and she is adventurous and innovative and uses her skills to develop and execute the HR priorities of that particular corporation. She enables the business to grow while fostering a positive employee experience. She believes in thinking big while hiring and developing the best. Lastly, we have Ashley Carr. Ashley Carr is a talent acquisition professional with Lidos. She is responsible for recruitment and selection of qualified talent to fill vacant roles. She currently recruits for this governmental contract with former, former military experts for the United States Air Force, Army, and agency contracts in military air crew training, intelligence, space, and missile defense. Prior to joining this company, she worked at Accenture as an IT recruiter, a diversity recruiter, and a HR career advisor. She holds um, a degree in psychology and she currently resides in Chicago. Without further ado, I would like to introduce our moderator, Lisa Harrell. Talking off mute always helps. <laughs> Thank you so much for that warm welcome. I am going to ask, as we get started, because this is going to be some presentation, some conversation, because we really want to engage you. This day is meant for you. We have so much talent on this line. I was able to scroll through um, and, and see the, the young talent. I see the students from a Barack and Michelle Obama school. So thank you so much for joining us. Your journey is beginning now. Everything that you have in store for you in life begins at this very moment. Every step you take forward, everything you learn, everything you put into yourself starts now. 
So every day you have the opportunity to just feed more into who you are going to be. And with that sometimes starts with your career. So that's what we're here to talk about today. I'm gonna to ask um, real quick, I'm gonna ask one of my, um, let's see, the person over technology, Michelle, if you will take down my screen, cause I wanna see everybody. I'm gonna take down the video, yep. So I'm gonna ask us to do one thing online. I'm gonna ask everybody to come off, uh, or put your, I wanna see your pictures. So let's see everybody's pictures for a moment. You'll be able to go back on, but I wanna see your awesome faces. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Beautiful, oh yes, all this awesomeness here. Thank you, thank you. Now, you are on the screen. Zoom is not where you will be all your life, but it is a place that we all engage right now. It is where some of you will actually have your interviews. Where you show up on screen, how you show up on screen will be just as important as if you were in person. So one of the things I'm gonna give you a little tip on before we even get started is just showing up. So we get in our street seats and sometimes we sit here and we can forget about what our faces look like. We can forget about how we show up. So I'm gonna give you a couple little tips. And the first is I need to set everybody's hands. I can see you. Put your hands in front of your screen. Just give me this, okay? Get a lot of tension in your fingers and how those are showing up. Why don't you turn them around? Turn them back around. Put down your left hand. Why don't you take your right hand and want you to take your index finger. We're gonna stretch that index finger, stretch it out because it is a lot of tension in there. And I want you to take that index finger because I'm looking at you and I want you to put it on your chin. Put it on your chin, your chin. This is my cheek. I want you to put it on your chin. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Thank you, some of you are still trying to get this. This is what I want you to take away, no matter what. People will watch what you do before they listen to what you say every single day of the week. So your body language, how you present, what you take away is just as critical. So see, somebody just got it. They were like, oh, okay, I get that. People will watch what you do. So there's power in your presentation. So even though you're going off screen now and we won't see you, I feel your vibe. You're about to hear from two amazing ladies that are gonna feed into your spirit, into your soul and tell you some things. Take notes, ask questions, engage, because it is much about what you do as what you say. Okay, so we're going into that. Thank you very much. You can take yourselves back off screen. And Michelle, we can put this presentation back up. I'd appreciate it. Um, about 30 years in, in human resources, I've seen a lot and I've talked to a lot of people and been able to really engage. Um, it is a, a wonderful profession I have, but the best part is that I get to engage with people like you. So before we begin, even with our speakers, I wanna make sure that we are able to acknowledge um, and give a shout out to those folks who are coming in. So we're gonna go back and we're going to engage the first person who came online, our first guest, um, and we are going to give you a door prize. So I'm asking um, Val, if you have the name of the first person who came aboard on our yes. screen. I, I shared it in the chat with you. All you right. have such a wonderful voice. <laughs> All right, let me grab that real quick. Josiah. All right, Josiah. We love it. Thank you so much for your promptness coming aboard and being prepared. You have shown us more than you have told us that you are even engaged. So Josiah, I'm going to ask you congratulations to drop your name in, your, in the chat to Latanya Walker and give her your email address and we will get a door prize off to you. Congratulations and thank you so much for joining us. All right, we can move into our first speaker then. I want to turn this over to Latrice Ose Asabe. You got her bio, but what I really want you to listen to is the word she's talking to you about interviewing techniques. Again, what you say, how you say it is just as critical. And she will be giving you some really critical tips and tools to make sure that you are successful and you show up in all of the awesome ways that you are. So with that, I will turn it over to Latrice. Thank you, Lisa, for that warm welcome. And I want to say um, good afternoon to everyone. Greetings and salutation. Uh, today, I am definitely going to be covering interview technique skills. I want to ensure that we're all empowered and have the tools that we need to be successful when we're on our journey for interviewing. Uh, interviewing techniques and skills, um, as, as we'll talk about today, um, I wanna get in the with them. So what's in it for me? Um, you say, so Latrice, what am I gonna get out of this when we speak today? What are we gonna capture and cover? Well, I want you to know that based on uh, what we're gonna be talking about today, I wanna be able to help you to reduce that stress 
during your interviews, making sure that you have that confidence because we've practiced and we've rehearsed this. So we know what that interviewee is going to be asking us and we're prepared to answer those questions. Um, we want to allow you to focus on connecting with your interviewer rather than struggling to come up with answers and being able to determine what we're going to say. If we're prepared, we'll be able to answer those questions confidently and it'll come across just like that to the individual that is interviewing us. And we wanna also prepare you for what the interviewer is seeking. A lot of times when we're interviewing, we want to make sure that we're looking as an interviewee, we're looking for individuals that know exactly um, how to resolve issues, questions, concerns, and sometimes emergencies that happen. So we wanna ensure that you're comfortable and prepared to be able to answer those. There are many different techniques that you'll see um, as you interview and in your journey for interviewing. So I'm gonna ask that you please Get your pen and papers out because I'm going to ask you to take notes because we're going to do a knowledge check at the end just to ensure that you understand what these techniques are and that if you have any additional questions or concerns that they can be addressed. And in our knowledge check, just to make sure everyone understands what the STAR technique is. Uh, for some, for the first time, STAR technique is really what we use to tell a story. And um, also, some may have referred to it or known as the bar. They both obtain the same information. We're just gathering them different steps, but they obtain the same information. Um, so looking at the STAR technique, we're gonna start with uh, breaking down what each one of those are. For the S, it will be situation. For the T, it will be task. For the A, it will be action. And for the R, it will be results. Now we're going to deep dive into why we choose the STAR technique. Um, it helps organizations make accurate assessments of a candidate. Um, the STAR, S-T-A-R, provides details about why or what actually happened and what value did the candidate or do you bring to the situation? Um, do you have problem solving skills? Can you work through problems, situations? Can you work well under pressure? These are the things that that STAR format will allow you to be able to show your, um, the individual that's interviewing you. So what sets you aside from everyone else's interviewing? We know that when we're interviewing, we all wanna say, yes, we are dedicated, we're hard workers, we're driven, yep. Everyone's going to say the same thing. So what we're looking for is what can you say that's going to set you aside from the competition, that's going to make you stick out and say, hey, I want to choose this individual to work in this job because I know that they will get the job done and they will execute it well. We're going to go into the first form, which is the S. The S is a breakdown for situation. So where, where did this occur? Um, when did this happen? It's almost like a story. We want to set the scene and say, give me a situation. Tell me where it happened. It's like when you watch a TV show. We want to know where's this scene taking place? Who's all involved? What is all is encompassing? So I'm going to give you an example, which you see on the screen, where it says, it was Wednesday in December during peak of 2019. I was working for Economic Legacy Incorporated in the finance department. That was a, there was a great storm and payroll checks had to be printed, had not been printed yet. Every Wednesday, checks need to go out in order to arrive by Friday morning. Again, this is the situation. So we're planting that seed to tell the story and we're setting the scene. Where is everything taking place? This is taking place during this period of time. This what was going on. Here was the issue. This way, the, the interviewee, that the one that is interviewing you can definitely see, hey, I understand where this is coming from. I can almost envision it myself. Again, S is for situation. Next, we're going to move to the T. The T is for task. just making sure the next slide has moved to T for task. And with the T, we wanna know what was the assignment? What was the goal? And what was the importance? 
So tell me what it is that you're involved in in this situation so that then, now that we know the background, we can start to determine what are the factors are involved. So for example, we need to make some updates to payroll to get the checks out to the employees and out for delivery by Wednesday so that they would be in the hands of our employees by Friday morning payday. So now I know where it's taking place. I know what is all involved in encompasses. And now we're gonna move to the next one, which is A, action. So in the, in, in the action form, Though others may have played a significant role, a lot of times we make errors in saying, we, 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 we. But in the interview, we is not looking for a job. You are looking for the job. So what you want to tell is what you specifically done in the situation, even though others may have played a role. So Example, what did you personally own? What specifically did you do in this situation? How did you do it? What or who else was involved? An example, I quickly reached out to the director of payroll, provided an updated spreadsheet for all employees impacted. To expedite the process, I reached out to dispatch to find another driver and that would deliver the packages same day. I gave exactly what it was that I did that I played a role in so that then I know, or that the person interviewing you knows that you know how to get actions completed and tasks done. Once we planted the seed of the situation, we've placed in what those tasks are, then we wanna move to those, we move to the action so we know specifically what we've done. We wanna move to our last point, which is results. Results, how did it turn out? Was it a lesson? Was it a blessing? It doesn't necessarily have to always be a positive um, outcome because sometimes it doesn't work that way, but it could have very much so been something that you learned from, that you've built great networking opportunities, something that you'll move forward with in the future and that you'll be able to utilize. Um, and an example is that is that the driver was able to pick up payroll checks and was on the road to deliver them same day. All of the employees were able to receive their paychecks by Friday morning. So again, I've given the situation, there was a payroll issue. It was in December, it was during peak season. The task, I needed to make sure that all of the functions were completed to ensure that I got um, payroll involved so that we can get those checks out. Actions, I updated spreadsheets, I got in touch with drivers. I in uh, involved other departments so that I can get that completed. And the results, yes, it was done. The driver delivered them on time. The customers, our internal customers were happy. They did not miss a beat. Again, guys, this is our STAR technique. This technique, the situation, the uh, task and action and results are what you wanna ensure that when you are giving questions and they are being asked of you, tell me about a time. We need to plan a story from beginning to end to tell them just how we work from the beginning and how we ended with those results. Um, so just to do a recap and a knowledge check, I'm gonna ask a few questions to you guys out there. So I'm gonna ask my moderate, moderators and uh, ind individuals involved to go ahead and check those screens for me as I ask these questions for our recap and our knowledge check. Again, I'm gonna ask questions and, I'm, and I want you to tell me the technique that you would use. Is it going to be situation? Is this a task that I'm asking about? Is it an action or is it a result? Are you guys ready? Okay, here we go. First question. If you were asked, how do you measure success for this project? Is it a situation that I'm asking, a task, an action, or result? Remember to drop your answer into the chat. All right, we're hearing several answers here. Absolutely, I'm seeing them come in. Results, you guys are on top of it, absolutely. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We had some folks out there listening. 
I appreciate that. You're absolutely right. This is asking for the results. They want to know specifically, how did this end? What part did you play in that? So thank you guys. You are on track. Here's our next question. If you're asked, what did you personally own? Is that a situation, a task, an action, or result? Absolutely, absolutely. And the correct answer is action. You guys are all over this. Yes, you guys are on your way to some sex, successful interviewing. Yes, this is action. We want to know specifically what you did. Personally all means what did you do in this situation? What action did you take place? Great job, guys. Here's our next question. Where did this occur? Situation, task, action, or result? I see them coming in. You guys are all over. This is absolutely correct. It is a situation. We are wanting you to plant the seed. Tell the beginning of what happened. Set the tone. Tell me where did it take place? Who all was involved during the time of the year? All of those important information that's really, really going to be important for us to plant that picture in our head, what that situation looks like. Great job, guys. Our next question, if you were asked, how did that, or how did you do that? Is that a situation, a task, an action, or result? Oh, I see a couple of different answers in here. Again, it's how did you do that? That was a tricky one. Yes, and the correct answer is action. Asking how did you do it means I want to know specifically what did you do. So yes, that would be action. That was a pretty tricky one. I know a couple of people had situation in there, but yes, think about what's being asked there. How did you do it or how did you do that? They're looking for you to tell the action that took place. All right, and here's our last question, guys. What type of environment were you in? Is that a situation, task, action, or result? You said, I'm not gonna fool you this time. Absolutely, absolutely. Great job, I see the responses coming in. And yes, you all are absolutely 100% correct. It is situation. That's right. I'm asking you what type of environment? That's part of that beginning of that story and setting that tone. You all did an absolute amazing job. You did really, really good on that. So yes, please remember situation, task, action, and results. So now I'm gonna just move right on to giving you guys just a few tips on being able to uh, interview. Um, when you're interviewing guys, just always be aware that hiring managers are looking to hire someone and we're wanting to make great hiring decisions. So again, you've got to say something that's going to set you aside from the competition. Again, everybody's going to say, I work hard and I'm dedicated, but what else can you provide that someone else has not given? And then do your research on the organization and the role that you are applying for. A lot of times when I'm interviewing individuals, I am so amazed and I am so taken aback when they say, hey, I know that your organization was number one in being able to provide uh, COVID relief responses or being able to provide COVID uh, testing on site for your employees and that you care about the health or that you're a Fortune 100 company and that you're moving for higher heights and deeper depths. I want to know, um, be prepared to write things down. 
So a lot of times people get nervous, but it's okay. I always say, do you mind if I take notes? And that is to keep you on track. We all know that we cannot remember everything on the top of our heads. How many times you went to the grocery store, said you were going to get this, you were going to get this, you were going to get it. And that was the one thing you left out by the time you got home. I never trust the mind. I always write things down. So during that interview, so that you stay on track, ensure that you write that information down. Make sure you take your time and ensure that you're answering the questions that are being asked. That's part of writing it down. Don't rush through it. It's okay to ask to repeat the question again. We just want to ensure that you capture everything that's being asked and that you're addressing them accordingly. And then prepare questions to ask at the conclusion of the interview. We look forward to those questions. I look forward to any, anyone asking me, hey, what do you know about the last person? Or what do you think I can do that the last person did that I can do differently to prepare me for success in this role? Or tell me about some challenges within this role that you look for the next person to make um, changes with and um, address those different opportunities. And then ensure that you practice responding to those interview questions. So when you're getting, when you're writing down or Googling those interview questions and you say, tell me about a time driving in your car, ask yourself, tell me about a time when you had to make a difficult decision and everybody was probably not on board. I don't care if you're talking to your dog or you have to talk to your children or your significant other or just have someone to listen to you. Practice, practice, practice. Practice makes a great improvement on you being prepared for those interviewing skills and being able to answer those questions as well as being prepared for that star feedback that you stars are going to provide when you are in that interviewing process. Um, this concludes my portion of the star piece. Um, I am now going to turn it back to our uh, moderator, Lisa, and she's going to uh, talk about some other tips. I have to make sure I do the unmute part <laughs> a lot. Thank you so very much. Um, Michelle, you can move it to the next slide. I want to make sure that people have an opportunity to ask questions. Latrice, this was extremely helpful. Thank you so much. Again, for all of you who have been on here, um, who are on the screen, if we can pull down the slides for one second, because again, I want uh, to see the faces as we come through here. Just pull up, um, you can pull down the slides for one second. I was, we can get everybody up on the screen. The information that Latrice shared with you, please don't just take it as a presentation, but the fact that you were engaged in this, this is real life. Over the time of 30 years, those things have not changed. We want you to be as comfortable in interviews as you can in that practice piece, it helps. Having a system helps. When you go back to STAR and you're able to do that, it makes, um, makes you much more prepared because sometimes when we forget or we're trying to impress somebody, we can start to ramble because it's easy to do when you're not prepared for that. And then you've missed the whole point of the question. This is your opportunity during an interview to sell yourself, to show that you are awesome. And then to understand more about the company too because it's a two-way conversation. And Latrice, I appreciate that, especially the last um, part that you gave about making sure that you're asking questions. I wanna pause though, and take a moment to see if we have any questions from anyone in our um, audience today about the interviewing techniques, about any part of the STAR presentation. Okay. Awesome presentation, Latrice. There's no questions thus far. You will have an opportunity towards the end to ask more um, if you think of something and that is okay. So take your time as you go through the presentations today and figure out what information that can we provide to you today because you got a captured audience here that wants to feed into you. If we can then, then thank you so much, Latrice. And if we can go to the next slide. You know what, um, so we have no uh, Ms. Lisa, I do want to give away a prize if you would be so kind to allow me to. The participants have done such an amazing job. I would love the opportunity to go ahead and give a prize. Um, if I may ask a question uh, to all of the participants today. Um, we just heard the presentation of the STAR technique. If someone or the first person that can go ahead and input in what the breakdown of the STAR is, what does STAR stand for? And the first person to answer that oh. accurately will win a fabulous or not so fabulous prize today. 
we got our first answer that was so quick. Let me see, <laughs> I, I gotta get back up to it now. <laughs> they are on a roll. I know, this is great. Okay, wait, I'm, I'm scrolling down, I saw it. I think it was Micah, one second. Let's see. Oh, wow, okay, hold on a second, let's see. That is it, Micah, is that correct? Micah Anos, if I'm pronouncing that right. Micah is our first response. Situation, task, action, result. Latrice, is that correct? Situation, task, action, result is correct. All right, we have our answer then. Micah, congratulations. You are the winner of our second raffle. And if you will please put your name and your email into the chat specifically for Latanya Walker, we will get you your raffle prize. Thank you, everyone. It's been great. That was so awesome. Latrice, I took enough notes too. So I'm, 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 you, cause you never start, stop interviewing. So I <laughs> thank you so much for your time. If we can now go to the next part of our presentation. And this is on resume writing. There are two sides to the coin. Interviewing, you show up and you're interviewing, you're letting people know, you're showing them up. But before you even get to the, get to the interview portion, how do you show up? The first part about what people see sometimes is just your resume. It's what you put on paper. It's how you show up and how you tell your story in a way that entices them to want to bring you in for an interview. So with that, I want to turn this over now to our next speaker, Ashley Carr. Thank you, Lisa, and welcome everyone. Thank you, Latrice. I think you truly set the context for the, the conversation. Um, so now we'll get into resume writing. Um, so we'll go to the next slide here. And we'll start with common mistakes, um, typos and grammatical errors, right? Um, typos can certainly be the determining factor for why your resume, resume wasn't picked over another candidate, especially when there's an overwhelming response to a particular position. Um, a simple grammar check can make a world of difference. Um, pay attention to things such as homophones, right? We wanna be sure that we're using the correct there, there, and there. Um, those things are important. While they seem small, they're important. Um, and then the lack of specific details, right? Please do not confuse being concise with lacking details. Be as detailed as possible. Give us specific examples. Um, then we'll go into a lack of focus on accomplishments. Um, I know it's sometimes hard to brag on yourself. However, this is the place you want to do so. This is your platform. Um, please include awards, acknowledgments, uh, moments of recognition, um, even if that was from outside companies, um, definitely focus on your accomplishments. Um, too busy. So I've seen a number of resumes. I've been reviewing resumes for approximately seven years. And sometimes I see some resumes that just have too much going on. They'll have graphs at the top, a pie chart at the bottom, um, you know, several boxes of information all over. Um, please try to limit the distracting pieces um, of your resume. Um, we want your resume to be clean and very easy to read. I need to be able to find the details that I'm looking for quickly. Sometimes I'm reviewing a hundred or more applications and that's you know for like easy roads but I mean it can gradually or increase into about a, a thousand or so and so I just need to be able to see the information right away um, and also lack of soft skills right um, soft skills include interpersonal people skills communication skills listening skills time management um, those things are important especially when you're looking to make a career change. Sometimes your skill set may not convey uh, the, the role that you're, or translate to the role that you're looking to enter into. Um, however, those soft, soft skills can truly help. Um, also, hiring managers typically look for candidates who have soft skills because they ultimately 
uh, equate to success. Um, and so some of the soft skills that I have listed here or that um, I, I want to speak on is communication, creative thinking, time management, motivation, um, critical thinking, problem solving, conflict resolution. Those are all soft skills that we use in every role. So be sure to convey those in your resume. And then another I think we went a little too fast, um, but the, the last point on the last common mistakes piece was no action verbs, right? Um, or using those that are used very frequently. Instead of talked or led, presented, maybe use addressed or corresponded, persuaded. Um, instead of organized, maybe use cataloged or executed. Um, instead of maybe led, ha handled, or oversaw. These are some action words that you might want to include in your resume. And so now we can go to the next slide. So now we'll go over some resume tips. Keep a master. Um, I see time after time that sometimes, you know, you may have sent the wrong resume. Um, I say that because um, if we, you know, see a little below there, there's definitely the opportunity or you should have different versions, but you need to be very careful when you're sending your resume to different roles. So keep a master, um, keep it in a Word and a PDF so that you're able to edit it when needed. Um, and keep this version as generic as possible. Um, so again, we want you to have those different versions because um, in some cases, your resume or the role may require for you to shift things a bit and that's okay. And so um, your resume in some cases should cater to the, the role. Um, we have different roles like CVs or curriculum vitae um, for academia. And then there are technical resumes that list more technical requirements. So definitely have different versions. Um, one of the things we do not want to see is the objective statement. That's kind of antiquated. Um, it, it's an old tradition and it just takes up space. So we're, we're ditching the objective statement. Um, we want for your details to be presented in reverse chrono chronological order, experience and education. So put your most recent first and work backwards. Um, and then two pages max. Uh, professionals who are reviewing, reviewing resumes um, typically do not have a lot of time and to sort through a lot of pages. So be succinct and to the point. Um, if it has to go beyond, you know, maybe three or four, um, but definitely try to keep it to a two page max. And I think we can progress to the next slide. So um, more tips here. Contact information, it is important, so, so very important. Typically with my candidates, even if you've applied through our systems, I will um, say, I'll reach you on the number on your resume or I'll have my hiring uh, manager reach you on the number on your resume. And that's because that's the, sometimes hiring managers don't have access to our tracking systems. Our resume, the resume is what we're going off of. So um, be sure to have your contact information and have it listed correctly. No address is needed now. That is also kind of antiquated. Um, just email and phone number. Sometimes you can list like your location. So Chicago, Illinois, Atlanta, Georgia, but definitely no need to include your entire uh, address. And so um, 10 to 15 years max, as far as the experience listed on the resume. Um, there are some back and forth about that. Um, this is a very uh, vast amount of years. Typically employers only need to verify the last seven years of employment. So it's um, 10 years as well, I mean, it is definitely enough. Now, if 
you've been in that role 10 years, you definitely want to say, I've you know, been in it from this such and such date to present. And that will show that you know, you've been in this role 10 to 15 years. Um, but definitely, you know, we don't need a laundry list of all of your roles, just the relevant ones and you know, try not to take it over the 10 to 15 years. Um, so then we are going to move to limit jargon. Um, make your resume, uh, you know, user friendly. I can admit half of the roles that I recruit for, I know nothing about. So when it's too many technical terms, I can get lost, right? So try to make it user friendly. Try to, you know, translate what you do, um, you know, in a way that will convey your responsibilities to the common person. Um, and then also uh, make for sure though that you have the keywords necessary. Oh, I think I skipped one, sorry about that. So yes, you will um, use keywords and I'll come back to how did you benefit your company. Use keywords, recruiters love buzzwords. So when you are trying to insert that technical jargon um, definitely have it there. You know, I recruit for a lot of technical roles. And so sometimes I'm looking for Java, C++ and, you know, things of that sort. And I'm literally doing a control find. And if it doesn't have it, I can't entertain it. So definitely use those words. They are the words that help us determine if your resume meets the basic qualifications for the role. Um, and then I'll go back. So how did you benefit your company? That's huge. I think um, Latrice, you know, sort of hinted on that a bit. You're, you're, you're selling yourself, right? So make for sure that you're identifying what makes you stand out from the rest. Um, what have you done for your organization? And those things may or may not be um, necessarily things that you have thought about in the past, but I task you with thinking about those now and getting those on your resume. Think we can move to the next slide now? All right, so graduation dates. So unless you're a recent high school graduate, um, we, we don't really want to see high school graduation dates. Um, it helps prevent bias. Um, there are some times when, you know, a lot of people say, oh, someone told me I'm overqualified or underqualified. Those are biases. We try to um, avoid those and it helps when those types of dates are omitted. Um, again, unless you are uh, a recent uh, high school graduate, um, you know, you, you definitely want to put that on there. Um, again, and if that information is needed during the background check verification process, your recruiting professional will certainly let you know. Um, GPAs, you don't have to include that either unless you're a recent graduate. Um, it's a bit of an antiquated, you know, sort of formality, um, but not necessarily needed or necessary unless you are applying to specific internships or entry level programs, things of that sort. So um, definitely, you know, given your situation, you'll know best, but unless you're an entry level internship seeker, no, no GPAs. Um, and so then skills, we want to see your skills listed out. Again, we are, uh, you know, looking for those buzzwords. And so typically I go to the portion of the resume that lists skills, organize them as well. Um, we want to make for sure that your administrative skills are lumped together, your technical skills skills are lumped together, your customer service skills are lumped together so that we're able to see them right away. Um, and then I think I lost the presentation, but I think we were next, it was add words and certificates. That's also very important. Um, again, we are bragging here. This is your platform to brag on yourself. Um, include your awards, include your certificates, um, and especially for recent graduates, include your volunteer experience. That helps translate your you know, experience that you've had. It may not be professional experience, but to the professional world. Okay, I think the presentation is back. Yep, so now we are at GAPS. So for GAPS, um, be honest about GAPS. 
Um, there are way too many times I find resumes that try to fabricate gaps, right? Um, there may be a, a, a true need for a gap and that's completely understandable, but try not to um, sort of place in lieu of a a uh, gap that you've started an organization or that you've launched this business um, when it's not verifiable. Be honest, you know, say, you know, even if you don't say that you've been out, the recruiter will ask or out of work for some time. So again, in, in that honest um, honesty, also explain loan gaps. Sometimes we see caretakers taking, you know, six months away from the workplace to take for family members, and that's completely okay. Um, so, but we do, we will re uh, require a explanation for those gaps. Um, and so, yes, be honest about them. And when asked, definitely, you know, provide that information. Gaps are okay. They're not your enemy, as long as you're, you're honest. Uh, I think we can go to the next slide. Okay, and so references, oh, references available upon request. Um, it's not necessarily necessary anymore. Um, we, the, it, again, an antiquated sort of formality. Um, I would encourage you to have a separate document um, with your references listed should the, um, you know, recruiting professional asked for them. Um, I personally have not checked references in a very long time, but there are some organizations that still do, but you do not have to put that on the resume. Um, just have them ready if needed. Proofread, proofread, proofread. This is probably as important as practice um, in interviewing. Um, I, I Please proofread. Recruiters are busy. Again, they are viewing hundreds of resumes at a time. Keep the resumes clean. Uh, be sure to scrub them for details that you've included for a previous role that you applied to yesterday. Um, and be sure to swap out the details to make for sure that they can convey the necessary details to this current role. So proofread. Um, again, we are busy, but we definitely wanna make the best decision. Submit as a PDF. This is important because some systems sort of shift um, or your resume shift after they've been, um, you know, submitted. Um, definitely veer away from like text or dot, dot text files or even word files. Sometimes it can just, you know, lead to uh, errors being uh made in the translation or in some cases I'm working on a lot of things I may backspace something or edit something but if it's pdf I can't you know edit it or the system can't edit it and it's a, a very reliable document in that case um, and resume uh, uh, smartly name your resume that's important I sometimes I see resumes that come through with so many special characters and I'm looking back to find that resume after I viewed it five minutes ago and it's just hard to find. Um, so try to name your resume smartly. Um, sometimes that could be your first and last name, dash the role that you are applying for. Other times that could be the date or, or something like that, but try to be conventional in your naming practices. Okay, so I think we can proceed to the next slide which is questions and answers. Um, moderator? Yeah, I, I actually have one here. Before I do this, I wanna engage everybody's here because what you just gave was phenomenal. Been interviewing for 30 years. I actually interviewed, but you gave some tips reminding me of some of those things that are antiquated that, oh, don't even have to do anymore because we're saving space. And then I heard one of our uh, guests, Patrick, who joined in about the same thing with you. So if you can, for those of you who are participants, name one thing that you are gonna take away from this presentation, one thing, because we get a lot of information, just start putting them in the chat, be it naming it, recommendations, whatever that might be, just I wanna see them flowing. What is one thing you're going to take away from this particular presentation on resume writing? Don't need your full address, yep. Awesome, because we're capturing all these too. Submit in the PDF, that's one thing that I got, yes. Keywords, excellent. 
Two words next, okay. Be honest, graduation dates, excellent. Each of you will take away something that means something for you, but you're getting some tips from people who actually hire and look at your resumes. And I appreciate the fact, keep going, just put those in there. Um, Ashley, the one question that I did get, it was directed to me, but I know it's to you, is um, I'm a student. I haven't worked really before. At what point do I need a resume? I volunteer a lot. And if I do need a resume, what do I put on it? So you need a resume the moment you began looking for employment. Um, that's the entry gate. So if you're a recent graduate and you want to become employed in the near future, you need a resume. Um, can help translate into actual experience. Um, when you are detailing your experience as a volunteer, be sure to incorporate those soft skills. Um, show how you took leadership, you managed time, you resolved a conflict in those situations, and that can help put your resume, you know, in a place where, okay, we can give this candidate a, you know, um, and a uh, another glance or even an interview. So certainly um, do not hesitate, do not be scared to, you know, create a document if you feel like you don't have anything yet to put on it because you do. So definitely dig deep, find those volunteer experiences and make for sure they translate to real world situations. Awesome. Okay. I'm looking at it. Are there any other questions you might have for um, Ashley on this particular presentation? Moderator Lisa, I'm placing them in the chat for you. Direct. Excellent. Thank you so much. I'll take a look at those. Okay. Each, let's see, we have one from, and I'm sorry, they're coming through great now. Let's see. Mission. Apologies. One second. I just need to make sure I'm getting the right ones. Please. Let's see. <laughs> Do you recommend a resume template? So yes, I, as a starting place, I do um, because they can give you the foundation for your, your resume. Um, I think our resumes are created different. However, you know, you, you may use that template as a starting place. Do not get too fixated about their formatting, their, um, you know, sort of recommended placement of details. Um, make it your own, but they are a great starting place and I would recommend them. Excellent. And then now we have a question from Shannon. Um, for each position listed, how many bullet points should you have to describe what you're doing during that time? That's an amazing question. Um, I would say no more than about four to five, especially if you have other roles. Now, if we are entry level, if we are, you know, just formatting or creating this resume, you can have a bit more so that you're able to convey those words. But if you're experience level and you have, you know, seven years or so, definitely limit those bullets to about four or five five max. Again, we're busy. We, we want to see the information right away. Right. I think that goes into another question we had that said, how much do you consider is too much information? So thank you so very, very much for that. Um, there was a question about um, LinkedIn. I see a lot of people using QR codes now. Do you recommend that? And should I put my LinkedIn information on my resume? You know what? That is also a great question. And it's, it's a very good suggestion. Um, if you have an updated profile, please do not link your resume to something that you do not want to be visible. Um, if you are updating it regularly and you want for um, professionals to see that information, yes, certainly put it up there. You're going to put it with your contact information. So where your email address and phone number is listed, also list your, um, your QRL. Awesome. And another one, Erica has asked, uh, Erica W, should you include personal information such as hobbies or interests? That's a good one. It's a bit antiquated as well. Um, there, you, you can, you can. Um, I do believe that in some cases that can um, increase bias. And I, I know I speak to that or I spoke to that a little bit before, but in my world, ethics is, um, 
you know, a standard. And we want to be sure that we're not se selecting candidates based off, oh, she loves to um, craft. I'll put her resume on the top of this pile. Mm -hmm. um, those things can be good. Um, however, just be careful about what you're putting on there and how you're, you're, you're placing it on the resume. I've seen some that place it in a, ve a very professional way, um, but oftentimes, especially if you are a bit more senior or mid-level career, those details may not be necessary. I have affiliation, a certainly. You can put affiliations on there, but maybe not hobbies, you know, things of, if you are chairing a board or anything like that, yes, place those things there because those are soft skills that, you know, we know if you're the chair of something, you know how to manage people, you know, so definitely place those there, but just hobbies, crafting, you know, uh, you, vision board make, you might not want to put those things on there. Excellent. I have one quick question, um, and then I will have a, a final question on um, on uh, cover letters. So be prepared for that one. Um, is there a particular rec uh, recommended font? I say Times New Roman. Yeah. Um, that is the go-to. Um, I see a lot of plays on font. If you're going to play on font, do so with your name or with something that is a little bit less important for reading through the information. Um, two, like fonts that can be a little too funky and a little too, you know, um, elaborate can can be distracting. I'm, I'm, I'm probably, again, I'm busy. I, I may just say, okay, I'm gonna have to come back to this because I can't really find what I need. So Times New Roman, um, Calibri is another aerial, very plain fonts are what I would recommend. Excellent. Now, two final questions. There are a lot of them coming in here, and we're probably going to even put some to the end. This is so great. I'm loving this. The first one is about the use of cover letters. You know, when I was growing up, right, that's what we did. We put a cover letter, three paragraphs, your intro, this, your close. Do we do cover letters anymore? And is it valuable? So, I mean, I, I personally don't look at them. Um, I honestly do not. And it, it may be me. Um, I recruit for a lot of military roles, a lot of technical roles, and I need to get straight to it. I'm also running up against, you know, major timelines, and I don't have to read a paper, and that's how I view it. <laughs> yeah. um, and so I, if you want to, however, include a cover letter, please do so in a separate document. You do not have to attach, I mean, sometimes you get the option to attach several documents, and you can certainly put it there. Sometimes my hiring managers may want to see it. I may not, but if it's there, I'll shoot it over to them, and they may have, you know, more of an appreciation for a, a cover letter, but I would make the recommendation that you separate the documents. Excellent. Thank you. I'm going to ask one final question here, and I see that there are so many more coming in, so we're capturing them, and towards the end, we may go back and ask um, some more of them. But um, there was one question, because we talk about Splash. You talked about all these things that you, all these resumes you see. I want to make myself stand out. How do you feel? Like you said something about the boxes and the colors. How do you feel about colors? How do you feel about just doing something to make myself stand out, including my picture? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. So um, colors and pictures, that, so that, those are vastly different. Um, but colors, let's see. Colors are okay, especially if you are, you know, sort of being neutral with them. I see a lot of blues. I see a lot of grays. Um, in some cases, I see a pop of color, again, for the name. Um, however, just r remember, the distraction piece is huge. So please, you know, do not include distracting color. I cannot read highlighter yellow. Um, I don't want to read highlighter, highlighter yellow. So we need to be mindful of the person on the receiving end. Um, pictures, that's huge too. Um, it's, it's for me a no. Um, it's, if identification, include that, that link to your social media. Um, but you know, the picture can in times increase bias. Um, I'm, he, I'm a diversity recruiter at heart, and I want to see persons of color, you know, get selected into those roles. And historically, we have not seen persons of color be selected when there's a, a image attached to it. So um, just be mindful. It's your personal, personal decision, um, but 
In my professional opinion, I would err on the side of caution and not include photos. Excellent. All right. I appreciate that. Uh, now, if we can go to our next slide, your questions have been invaluable. Again, we may have time at the end where we want to capture even more of these questions. You may want to think about how you're linking your resume to your interview, because you remember, that's the first time you show me what you're doing. And then in the interview, don't want to put anything on your resume, not that you're not prepared to talk about and expound on in your interview. So those things definitely connect. Um, so now we are time for another raffle prize. Ashley, do you have a question that you would like to present to this audience to see? I do. I do. So the first person in the chat will win a raffle. Um, and the question goes as follows. What are, what is, it, it may be just one of the things that I mentioned, something you probably do not want to include on a resume anymore? Anymore. Oh my gosh. Remember. Any, any more, so. Yep, got it, I think um, the first person. The address, yeah. hold on, I gotta go back up. Now they're coming in, boom, 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 boom. The first person who said, uh, okay, we got, hold on. Oh, we got a lot of things that come through, I love it. One second. Page numbers. All right, the first person who put in GPA, which is one of those things you said we do not put on there, is Shannon Minow. I'm pronouncing your name right. Congratulations, yeah. Shannon. Other than that, we do have others that say GPA address, and we thank you for that. But the very first person who put it in is Shannon Miner. Shannon Miner, congratulations. If you will, Shannon, put your name and your email into the chat to Latanya Walker. She will get you your prize. So thank you so very much. Thank you. Ashley, all. this is absolutely awesome. Before I go to the next slide, I just want to put in one commercial. Um, um, for Ms. Phelps, who has asked, if you are a student from Barack or Michelle Obama School, please drop your information into the chat so we can make sure that you do get credit. Okay. All right. Thank you. If we can go to our next slide. We're into the dress for success era. Again, we're putting on, we're building. So I wanna make sure that you're paying attention to this. We first have talked about our interview skills. And when we get to interviewing, what do we need? We need a great resume. And now once we're in there, how do we show up? And goodness gracious, I'm on Zoom. So our leggings okay? You only see me from top. Talk to me about dressing for success for that interview. We are gonna turn this back over. I think Ashley, you're this is your second part? Yes. All right. Okay, so, oh, some yep. do's and don'ts. Um, I think we can go back. So do's and don'ts. Um, times have changed drastically, um, but professionalism is just that, professionalism. There are just certain do's and don'ts that you want to be cognizant of. Um, even via Zoom. So jewelry, you want to make it, you know, very minimal. Do not have large, uh, gaudy um, sort of jewelry during your interview. It can be distracting. You want to be con conservative. So a pantsuit um, or a skirt suit, we're talking men or women, is definitely appropriate. Um, for women, that skirt should certainly be below the knees. Um, we do not want to be provocative in our interviews. Um, hosiery is a must. Um, you know, dark shoes, a, a very um, acceptable heel. We don't need the stilettos, not necessarily for an interview. So very, you know, um, heels that can you can walk in in particular, especially if you are going in person to an interview. It looks kind of bad when you're wobbling down the hallway. Um, so go for comfort, go for dark shoes, um, definitely a thing. What we don't want to see, right? Again, the necklaces that are too much, too gaudy, it's distracting. Um, bright colors um, and, and excessive patterns. Some patterns can be okay. Um, I've seen shirts that have dots on them or stripes. That could be okay, but as simple as possible so that the attention 
attention can be on you and not your shirt or your pattern. Um, Capri's a little bit too casual for an interview. We have seen businesses shift to more of a business casual model, um, such as my company. Um, and so those things could be acceptable once you're through the door. Definitely err on the side of caution when interviewing, however. Um, and again, those, those shoes, you, you wanna be mindful. Um, you wanna be sure that they are closed toe, things of that sort so that you, know, you are coming across as professional. Lisa mentioned that you know, Zoom, I mean, I will be completely honest. I work home, from home, I've done so for the last six years. Um, and typically I work with my, my uh, bottoms, my pajama bottoms and a nice top, top if I'm going to be on the, the Zoom sort of platform. However, the recommendation for interviews is that you are fully dressed. You do not want to have to get up and your bottoms are, you know, your PJs. So definitely just for interviews, even for work. I mean, I don't get up much. Um, I'm not on video much as a professional. And so that's just been me. Um, but definitely, you know your situation better than mine try to be as professional as possible. We see a lot of bloopers on these videos um, and you do not want to be a blooper, so. Now, Ashley, I know we have the, the slide up um, with the women on it. Can you talk a little bit about um, men's attire? You said a men's suit, but yes. in casual environments, is it okay to wear a jacket? Is it okay to wear simply a shirt and a tie? Talk to me a little bit about that. Yes. So yes, um, for men, you definitely, suit is, is, the, is the way to go. Um, be careful. I see a lot of men coming into interviews with half button shirts or, you know, they're a little too comfortable at the top. You want to have a tie for a professional interview. You want to be fully buttoned. Um, you want to have on shoes that are, again, um, appropriate for professional attire. So maybe shoes that you wear to church or something like that. No sneakers. Um, you, you, you want to come across as professional. Again, those patterns are important. Um, you want to be sure that they are not distracting um, tie or and or shirt and or, and or suit. Um, simple as possible um, so that you are the center attention of attention and not your dress, your, your attire. I heard a key word from you, which is the words, what you speak, what you're talking about should be the center of your interview and not distracted by your, your fabulousness because we can exactly. be fabulous, right? We can be fabulous, but you can All be right. fabulous and simple. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, we want to move to, I'm going to shift and I'm not going to take questions here because we're taking a shift and what I'm going to ask Latrice to probably come on back on screen here. Our next topic, we're trying to move you through because this is all a package. And what we're trying to do, we're marketing that brand that is you. And that's what you're building with everything you do. It is your personal brand. Your personal brand starts even before you walk into that interview. It's even before um, you start to build your resume. It's even before you start thinking about it. You're building that brand every time you put out a tweet. You're building a brand every time you put something on social media. So our next topic, which actually we're gonna take, and then I'm gonna ask um, just for the purpose of the conversation, uh, Michelle, turn to the slide, then I'm gonna ask you to take it down because this is gonna be a brief conversation because I wanna interview um, uh, Latrice, uh, excuse me, Latrice and Ashley, and then uh, I'll interject as well. And that is on social media. Why? Social media is actually a topic unto itself. We could do a whole topic, a whole training on social media. But because it is so prevalent, because we know we have different um, generations on this call and we live in our lives by social media, it is something that we want to make sure that we are imparting that knowledge to you. And it is not to in any way inhibit your freedom, it is not to do anything against your ability to say what you want to say, just understand that there are consequences to everything you do. And understand that the, the, the brand, your brand that you're putting out there, employers go look just like you do, because I know I do. So what message are you carrying forth from your social media into your resume, into your interview, in how you dress, and then how you come across, okay? So we're going to take a few minutes and talk about social media. Get your questions ready because I love to be tested because I get it all the time. Ask me, ask us those questions. The first question that I want to throw out to you, both you, Ashley, and Latrice, is the use of social media platforms to express my opinion about politics, about religion, what can I say, what can I say 
it's my personal voice and how much does that impact or it, um, it could it impact my interviews? Okay, I can start. Um, that's huge, Lisa. Um, I definitely feel that is your page. You have freedom of, you know, speech. Uh, you know, to write whatever you want, to publicize whatever you want. It's the access for me, right? So if you're going to have those pages that are, uh, you know, open, you probably shouldn't. I go looking for those details in particular. I go, not necessarily politics, but in the climate that we're in now, yes, politics. Like it's huge. Companies are firing employees because of things of that sort. So you want to be cognizant. If you don't want those things to be apparent, close out your page. Um, make it private to your friends only. Do not have it accessible to professionals like myself who use social media daily to source candidates. Excellent. Latrice, is there anything you want to add to that? Absolutely, absolutely. Even it is a little risky also even keeping it private. Um, I hire for VP positions and what we have our LP, which is our uh, loss prevention, part of our security, and they have accessibility to be able to see things that you don't think that they can see. So I would caution what you post because keywords, especially if it's tied to any type of organization, keywords that pop up are things that come on their alert. And once they do that, now you've become a risk to the company or the, or the organization. Just like um, was stated before, um, there are times where people will make comments and it doesn't have to necessarily be about a specific person, but you make something in general where that could be offensive to someone else. It's all about perception. So it doesn't even matter that you weren't specifically talking to a specific person. It's the perception. So if anyone feels that they've been threatened or what you said violates um, any type of uh, sexual harassment or harassment in general, if you said something that could be offensive to someone, these are things that become a red flag and a risk to an organization. And you're probably going to receive uh, feedback or you're probably going to ask to be uh, spoken to. And we're going to ask you some questions. And then that will probably be the end of your uh, employment. So, um, I would always tell individuals, be mindful of what you post, especially when it comes to religion, sex, anything that falls under those categories of harassment. Um, even if you may not care about a particular politic or anything of that nature, please be mindful what you say. If you attach your organization's name, you are accountable for um, that information that you pay. So if you, if I work for FedEx and I say something about FedEx, that's going to be flagged. So ensure that you avoid writing anything about a company or an organization because those things are reviewed. They are definitely researched and that can lead up to termination. And that's the last thing you want for being able to post, even though we are free to say what we want, they do come with repercussions. So you want to be mindful that uh, you watch what you uh, type in your social media because it can have an effect on your employment. Awesome. Okay, my next question. And again, I know that there's a whole, like I said, this can be a whole three hour training, but we're going to touch on a couple things. My, my next question to you ladies, because um, this is the media where everybody, we're selfing, we're taking pictures because we're fabulous, right? So let's talk about two things. On my LinkedIn page, if I'm professional, on my Facebook page or whatever, um, and I've got this really great picture because I'm awesome, and it just is like, what is considered a fabulous picture? Can I do this? Um, I know duck lips are still big, I think. I'm not sure, but everybody did this. Talk to me about the use of pictures and how you come across. Does it really matter? I'm with my friends. I'm at the beach, kind of all over the place. That's still my personal page. Um, and on my LinkedIn, what should we be thinking about when it comes to photos and posting those things? When it comes to work, that's what I'm talking yes. about. <laughs> yes, and and even so, even if your page is private, your professional hit, your pro profile picture is accessible to myself. I I can see that, so um, it's still important to have that be professional if that's what you're aiming for. If you want your glam shot up there, your seduction duck lips, then 
you can have that, but know that even in a private setting and a private page, I can see your profile picture as a human resource professional. And I just might not, you know, decide to move forward if I'm seeing, you know, your, your duck lips or your, you know, more provocative nature posts. Yeah. And then one final one, and then we will move forward. And this is it because I, I um, yesterday actually got an email um, from a gentleman and his um, email on his uh, resume was rocking your world. It was so-and-so at rockingyourworld.com or rocking, it was something about rocking something world. It was really interesting to me. Um, is that very important in, in, about what you're using for things just like your email addresses or how you're naming things? Is that really that critical or is that just kind of like, eh, it's fun and it's mine? Or should I have a separate one for my professional? Um, often, even I'll, I'll take this one, often as I look at resumes, um, we, we should not judge and assuming on what a person's character or um, how we feel that they may or may not work. But we know that in first impression is everything. So if someone sends me something that says shakeyourbooty.com, Michael, I am going to question if this person is going to be a risk or they're going to be an HR nightmare with employing them because I don't want your personal activities because I'm definitely going to assume that's what I should be doing to, uh, to prepare myself for any type of risk with the organization. And so if I see that, the first thing I'm going to do is say, eh, he's probably going to be a risk and I may not want to take that chance with that individual. So nine times out of 10, I would move on to someone else. So I always encourage individuals to create their own email address that is professional that we can utilize um, that wouldn't give me pause if anyone in the HR uh, field were to, to review it or to see it. Okay, thank you for that. Um, as you see, social media, again, is a huge topic. We, we encourage you to continue to, to discuss that and learn a little bit more, but we wanted to give you these three topics to give yourself something to think about. The bottom line is, honestly, you have the freedom to do and say whatever you want, period. Um, that's it. Um, that there are consequences and people can see those things. And then um, above all, you're building your brand. So what is your brand saying about you um, as you go forward? And do, are those separate? Are they saying? But either way, you're building the brand and you should be able to, to support it and it should tell a lot about you. So with that, if we can move to um, the next slide. I want to make sure now that we're able to think about the different topics that have gone through when I'm looking at my timing. I don't have my, my clock up here. Let me see how we're doing. Okay, we're doing great. Um, you had um, topics on interviewing. We had topics on resume writing. You heard about social media. We talked a little bit about your dress. And then there's an overall work branding. I would like to open this up to now. And I think I have a lot of questions coming through. So um, Val, if you can help me with this, I'd like to start taking questions. We can actually, if we wanna, we can, well, we can keep the questions up there. Um, help me to understand or make sure I'm answering questions in the order that they were received. So Val, if you can help me go back to the top and let me know what was the first question that came through, if you can see it as well. Yes, so far we have, uh, uh, I sent it to you in the chat, forgive me, uh, to you directly. Okay, let's see. All right, bear with us just a little bit here. Aha, uh -huh. okay, well, here's one specifically first. Um, and this can be either for Ashley or Latrice. Do you use the email address on your resume to look at on social media profiles? No, I am looking at your name and I am looking up your social media, your Twitter, your Facebook. I am Googling every part of you just to see if I can truly see who this individual is and if they are going to be a risk to the organization. Thank you. I actually want to speak to this is a comment actually from one of our, um, our participants who is an educator and reminding students that you always have their EDU your you know, .edu email to use that you can be more professional on and it gives you that place and that comfort that if your school can see it, chances are the job can see it. So that was a very good point. So thank you, um, Rosalind, for that. Um, yeah. Let's see, here's a statement and then here's a question. I have not participated in social media such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, et cetera, for about four years now. Can this be viewed, older stuff, by hiring managers as bad and is it necessary to have an online presence? Very good question. Um, Latrice or um, Ashley, would you like to speak to this? So you can't even find me on social media. Is that a bad thing? 
It is not. Um, oftentimes we find candidates who don't have a social media presence and as long as their resume is um, ready um, for you know the process, uh, it is definitely okay. Um, Social media is definitely a newer thing and it's definitely the way of the world, but it's not for everybody. And that's completely okay. Um, if you do not have a social media presence, you just have to be sure that your resume is on point mm -hmm. um, and that your interviewing is amazing because there, there isn't any cross check for us. And we use social media now as like a cross check. So um, we're gonna do the most of our digging or weeding out, if you will, um, within that interview and resume review. Excellent, thank you. Um, I think we're back to, this question is about the resume writing going back um, earlier. Is there a certain number of page limitations that you stick to? You said two to four, but is there, yes. is there like- so, Yes, so they can vary, right? But your average resume should, should be no more than two pages. Um, and that's where the question that we had before was very important, the bullets, right? You want to be sure that you're not really um, placing too much in one space. So if you work, worked for, let's say myself, I've worked at Lytos for about two years now. Um, and then the bulk of my career was at Accenture for years years before. Um, I need to be able to balance all that out. I can't just because I've worked at Accenture longer, you know, have that be my entire, you know, resume. I have to be sure that I'm being cognizant of who's reading it. I honestly don't want to read um, a paper for a resume. Um, again, we're also doing, again, that con control find. That's where those buzzwords come in. So, Having it as succinct as possible is, is ideal. Um, if you have to, I've seen several resumes, especially for um, like software roles that, you know, they're probably like eight pages, but it's really because of those technical skill sets that they want to convey over. So there's definitely, um, you know, some wiggle room in that, but just your average resume, it should be two to four pages. Um, four is excessive. Can we just speak right there for one second? Because, I'm, because this will make a determination. It was a good question that came out about, you've talked about font. For what about font size and margins? Because I do know there are some that may be going, okay, two pages, got you. I'm going to make it as my, my, my margins as big as possible and I'll make my font as small as possible. Then I'll get you your two pages. Talk to me about what that looks like in that two pages, space, yeah. font size, margins. Yeah. So honestly, I play around with margins more than I probably play around with font, your font needs to be, I, I need to be able to read it. I need to be able to see it. Um, and so 12 point font is where I think you should go if you wanna play with it a little bit, 11.5, um, maybe-ish, maybe 11, but please don't go any smaller than that. What I do recommend is playing with the margins, especially in the era now, you used to didn't really want to play with margins if you were printing it out. Um, and you didn't want stuff to get cut out, but because it's such a, um, you know, if you're PDFing it and submitting it electronically, it won't shift, it won't move. Um, it's definitely ways to, you know, finagle the margins so that you're able to fit in what you fit. I customize my margins all the time for my resumes. Got it. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we had a, one more question I'm asking because it was a hand raise, but we'd appreciate if you can put it in the chat so we can capture it. Um, and I wanna make sure the hand raise was not by accident too. So let me give a second. You have one comment and two question, or one question left. One question left, okay, let me grab that. Um, aha, the one question left how important do you think having a LinkedIn page is? We talked about referring to it, but I really, do I need to have it? Um, I can take that as well. Um, it's pretty important. I mean, it's, it's, it's personal choice, right? But, you know, in the world that we're living in, especially because we're so behind computers, um, if you're comfortable with, a social media presence that will convey your professional um, experience, um, I would certainly recommend it. I mean, when I say that is, I'm logged, 
it's like right after I log into my computer systems provided to me from my job, I'm, I'm logging into LinkedIn. Um, that's where I'm communicating with candidates that may be passive. I'm communicating to candidates that may not have applied to roles and want to learn more. I'm communicating to candidates who are looking or, you know, they have questions as to their search and if there's anything at my company for them. So um, that's de it's a communication channel for me um, that I, I like to leverage. But again, if you're not comfortable, it's completely okay. You, you go the traditional route of applying to a job through that particular company's um, applicant tracking system, and you will be put in a position um, to, I mean, based on basic qualifications to be eligible for um, in an interview, just like your peers who have social media. Okay, thank you. Now we were closing with that question, but I have one more really good question that came through and I, and I love it, especially with the time. And um, it is, do you feel that there is a bias towards more ethnic names? Is it okay for me to use my first initial, my first name or my last name? And I would like actually Latrice Ose Asabe to engage in this conversation and Ashley Carr. We have names that we are very proud of. Do I have to give up who I am? Wait a minute, that's their issue. What does that mean? And are we seeing a bias? It was something that was addressed years ago. There were studies done about it. What does that mean today? I think, and that's a very, very good question, Lisa, thank you. Um, I think in this day and time, um, I, I know for myself, I always say, hey, I was not given the name. <laughs> This was not a name. In, this was not a name that I created. I was given the name. So I'm sorry, but please, I, I, um, you're you're a little bit back. I think. Let's see if I can get you. Yeah. Can you hear me? It's a little. We're okay. You can. I can hear you. I want to dig in anyway. Go ahead. So um, that was a really really good question. I know for myself, um, the name is not as important as what follows behind it. I know that you did not create that name, and that name was given to you. It is not defined by a character, but I definitely follow through with the story of your resume. So if your resume is not something that would be a great fit for the job, then you would not be selected. Not the name so much. I think people, we know that we all come from creative backgrounds. Look at my last name. My last name is going to say Asabe. You have no idea what my background is or what it includes. So therefore now we're just looking at the characteristics and the attributes of that particular candidate and not so much strongly as the name of the individual. So I'll just chime in a little bit because I think for professionals such as ourselves who are ethic, who will not make decisions based off name, that holds a lot of truth. Um, but what I've realized, especially as a diversity recruiter, that we have to educate our leadership, educate our hiring managers who are not used to that paradigm, that shift that we're making, because there's an education piece and the openness to that education that matters. So if your hiring manager is not um, you know, privy to understanding what it means to have unconscious bias, um, then there, there could be a disconnect there with a name. I have submitted resumes, especially to um, male dominant roles and they were wondering why Ashley um, was submitted to them and not Tom, you know, and that's discriminatory. Um, and, and sometimes so that, you know, you definitely don't wanna shy away from your identity. Um, and I definitely say, you know, hold true to yourself and your name, but know that, I mean, the honest truth is that there are still individuals out there that will, you know, sort of weed out based on, on those details. Um, that's why there's an intricate um, sort of inter interview process so that there's not one person determining who's being hired. But I have made cases, I have fought for individuals that I felt were jaded just because of a name or a naming convention or something of that sort. Um, so know that it's there. Um, I, said, I definitely say, put your name on everything. Sometimes I, I see a lot of initials, you know, we see a lot of Williams that put Beal and you know, like, so you, you, there is some play on that um, just at your comfort level. Um, but I definitely feel like we are moving into a time 
to where folks are being held accountable a bit more than they used to, but we're not completely there yet. Excellent. Thank you so much for those words. Now, as we close out this session, we have been giving you a lot of information. Thank you so much to our speakers, to Ashley and Latrice. You have just given us a, a, just a, a multitude of pieces of information. The information we're giving you has been really around that transactional piece when you're in there, the resume, the interview, the dressing, the social media piece. But leave with this, is, and it's wrapped all in this particular bow. Your interviewing starts the moment you meet someone, even before. So rather than thinking of any of these inter interactions as in um, a transactional thing, it should be about building relationships. Start to build relationships with people before you need the job. They get to know you through your volunteering. What type of student are you? How are you asking questions? When you're invited to a presentation, do you ask questions? Do you engage with the speakers? This is all about the brand you're building and you're showing who you are and you're telling us who you are instead of just, you're showing us who you are instead of just saying it, okay? Take our input that you got today, put it into that bow around, what is your brand? When are you showing up? What relationships are you building? So when it comes to that time to getting a job, you already have a foot in the door. So we thank you for your time today. If you wanna to go to the next slide, our last raffle. Uh, let's see, ladies, do we have the last raffle piece? I don't know if we put that on there. Um, Val, give me a question to ask. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Hmm, I got it. We were introduced by, and, and we were welcomed by our president of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Lambda Ta Omega Chapter. The first person who can add in who our chapter president is. We have Dr. Leah Hill. The first person is David Velasquez. All right, David. Thank you so much. Congratulations. And thank you for listening and engaging from the beginning. Please drop your name and your email address into the chat to Latanya Walker, and she will get you your raffle prize. Thank you to everyone that has shown up today. You have engaged. You showed us who you are and didn't just say it. We can go to that next slide. Again, we want to thank you. We will have a survey for you to complete, and it will be found in Zoom. I think we're going to pull that up so that you're able to get that. We thank you, thank you for that. Um, and, and we got the, yep, so we got it all in there. Please make sure you take a survey because we wanna make sure we're giving you the information that you need on a continual basis. Please go to the next slide. I now would like to turn this over to our chairperson for target three, Latanya J. Walker. Hello, thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to tell the students uh, at Northern University we're going to uh, show you a QR code so that you can get credit for uh, participating in the Northern University Business Passport Program. And uh, I thank you so much for your attendance. I'd also ask that you'd go to uh, our YouTube channel, Lambda Ta Omega, and subscribe. Um, a video of this presentation will be there. So again, thank you for your attendance. I know you could have done anything else today. I'd also like to give a special shout out to our Barack Obama uh, school participants. Uh, from the District of Superintendent Kalitha White and Assistant Principal Benita Phelps. Thank you again for attending. And if you have not placed your name in the chat so that you may also get your service credit, uh, please do so now. Um, again, my name is Latanya Walker. I'm the chairperson of Target 3 Committee, uh, Building Your Economic Legacy. And today's activity, it brings to mind a quote of Dr. Martin Luther King. And what he said is, whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. That was our purpose today, uh, making sure that everyone is everything that they can be and just providing service in the way that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. would have wanted us to do on this day. I, I think we did accomplish that. I'd like to thank our illustrious uh, president and vice president for their, their dynamic leadership of our chapter, uh, for spearheading our programs and making all of this possible. I'm also very grateful to our co-chairs of the target, Valencine Arnold and Taylor Walker, uh, for just their hard work behind the scenes um, and doing everything that they need to do to make this come forth. Um, special thanks to our presenters. These ladies are clearly heavy hitters. Lisa, 
Ashley, Latrice, this information was simply invaluable. Um, it was interesting. Um, you brought all of your expertise to the table. And I, I thank you so much because I super appreciate you and what you've given to everyone because this, this information applies to anywhere, to anyone, no matter what point you are at your career, no matter what your age. And they gave this from their hearts. They worked diligently for a long time. And I just, I thank you so much. And I thank you for your knowledge and sharing that wealth with us. Lisa, Ashley, Latrice, wonderful. Um, thank you to our moderator, Minya and Valencine and all of our Target 3 committee members and our chapter members who helped us in any way, whether you publicized or you gave us information. Um, I am just grateful from the bottom of my heart for everything that you've done. Our technology gurus, Yvonne Williams and Nicole Hamer, uh, we could not have done this without you guys. You all were just wonderful and they, they contribute even more than just the technology piece, but we're forever grateful to you and the technology committee and the protocol committee because this is a lot of moving pieces. It takes a lot to put something like this together. No one person or one group does it and I'm just grateful to be a part of it. And lastly, our audience. Uh, again, you could have done anything today. I appreciate you supporting our programs and attending this webinar. Um, again, I ask that you go to our YouTube channel, Lambda Tall Omega, subscribe to that. Um, that's where you'll find a copy of this and other programs that we do. Uh, and at this time, I'd like to turn it over to our program chair and vice president, Michelle R. Clark. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Madam Chairman. Um, outstanding job and good afternoon, everyone. I just got to give a special shout out to NIU. Um, my husband and I both graduated from Northern Illinois University. So we are proud Huskies and we're so excited that you have joined us today. This program has been absolutely outstanding and it's been an, an outstanding way to celebrate and commemorate Dr. Martin Luther King Day, and we appreciate you joining us today. The Reverend Dr. King peacefully participated in and led marches for Blacks' rights to vote, desegregation, labor rights, and other basic human civil rights. And because for his fight for labor rights, the Building Your Economic Leg Legacy Committee in Landa Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated has planned this Professional Skills for Career Success program for you today. Properly preparing for interviewing is an important, very important skill and step to landing your ideal job. And by doing some preparation, you'll feel more in control. You'll appear cool, calm, and collected as a result of your, to your prospective employer. And these are qualities always look for in their perfect candidate. And who they wanna hire based on interviews. Your resume helps you get an interview and reference checks and assessment tests are always used to validate the conclusions of the interviews. Today, our well-trained and experienced professionals provided invaluable information to you today to reduce those barriers that may prevent certain groups of people from entering and or progressing in an interview process or in a workplace. And they've also provided some fundamental elements to gain gainful employment. I wanna say and kind of uh, piggyback off of our chairperson today, uh, or Chairman uh, Latanya Walker, but I do want to say a special thank you to our wonderful, wonderful uh, leaders who led this initiative, starting with our moderator, Lisa Harrell, our guest presenters, uh, Latrice Ose Asabi, I hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, Ashley Carr, Valentine Arnold, and Maya uh, Coleman, and Michelle Hammer for their introductions and their technical support, as well as for the leadership and vision of our economic legacy chairman, Latanya Walker, and our president, Dr. Leah L. H. Hill. We invite you to please attend our Lambda Tau Omega chapter programs, which are frequently posted on our LTO AKA website. Our next interact program entitled Pink Goes Red raises awareness of risks factors associated with heart health and effective intervention and prevention practices. This event will be held on February 5th. They have a ton of prizes. We have uh, cooking demonstrations. We have yoga. We have uh, Zumba. There's all kinds of wonderful, wonderful things that we're going to be incorporating in that program. NIU, come up, show up. 
come back and join us. All the other schools that are here today, we ask you to come back. Educators, please encourage your students to come back for our Pink Goes Red that will be held on February 5th. Also, we invite you to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Please, please, please follow us. We would love for you to get a chance to see some other wonderful things we're doing for our communities. Again, thank you for joining us today. Let's continue to perpetuate the life, the legacy, the dream that Martin Luther King represents. And again, thank you all so much. And we appreciate you joining us. Back to you, Madam Chairman. Okay, I just wish you guys a wonderful rest of the day. Again, please constantly support our programs, join our YouTube channel, uh, and thank you everyone for your participation in this event. Have a great day.